What do you think of when I say geography of Nebraska? Um, flat, plains, um, more hilly up north, um, but other than that, there's not much. I think of the land forms, like how Nebraska is like all flat and like it's basically just plains and a couple hills here and there. Nebraska is very flat and a lot of cornfields. When I think of Nebraska, I think about flatland and corn and basically the little house on the prairie. Great plains. Um, flats. Grass. What do you think of when I say Nebraska geography? I think of fields and a lot of flat areas and a few trees, but not very many. Describe Nebraska's geography. Fairly flat in the east with some gentle rolling hills in the west, I think you can understand. You have the sand hills and that's more of a desert, I don't really know for sure. So. Because the majority of the U.S. population sees Nebraska only while traveling through the state on Interstate 80, it is stereotyped as boring, flat, and filled with corn. If only people would adventure off the beaten path, they would see a whole different side of Nebraska. However, it is true that a large fraction of the state is covered in cornfields and makes its appearance as flat or as rolling hills. The consistent presence of farms across the state is largely due to two factors the Ogallala Aquifer and the Platte River Valley, both of which serve as an irrigation source. Because Interstate 80 so closely follows the Platte River Valley, cornfields surround it and create the stereotype Nebraska is most known for, Cornhuskers. Back in the 1860s, the government chose to give away the dry, desert-like land of eastern Nebraska to encourage settlement the state was first nicknamed the Tree Planter State in 1895 because of the many trees planted by farmers attempting to create an environment which would serve well for growing crops. In 1945, that name was changed to the Cornhusker State. Up until settlers began to reside along the Platte River Valley located in south central Nebraska, its broad stream bed meant frequent flooding and inability to use its waters effectively. Now its flow has been altered with dams and reservoirs, making it narrow and deep and increasing its value as a source for living, agricultural, and recreational purposes. Contrary to popular belief, Nebraska is really only the third largest corn producer in the United States, behind Iowa and Illinois. The sand hills span 265 miles across Nebraska and were formed as wind blew over quartz sand grains deposited by the meandering streams which contributed to the formation of the Ogallala Aquifer. These dunes, held in place by grass, can be as long as 20 miles and up to 400 feet high. Due to the permeability of the soil, large underground water reservoirs form with even a little rainfall, and interduna wetlands are created when the underground water levels rise high enough forming an aquatic wildlife habitat in the midst of a desert-like ecosystem. Scott's Bluff, Chimney Rock, Courthouse Rock, and Jail Rock, located in the panhandle of western Nebraska, formed over many years as wind-blown sand and volcanic ash, as well as stream deposits of mud and alluvium, slowly constructed these geologic formations. Regional uplifting also contributed to its high elevation and susceptibility to erosion. Because the groundwater was rich in limestone, several portions of the uplifted plains were made more resistant to erosion, leaving landforms which represent the remains of years past. Toadstool Park, located in northwestern Nebraska, is filled with landforms created in ways similar to the famous bluffs and rocks located directly south of it. While the rolling hills of eastern Nebraska were formed by glacial deposits, the hilly formations found in northwestern Nebraska formed when clay and clay shale deposited by streams eroded more quickly from wind and water than the more resistant sedimentary rock forms present. 
Located in the Niobrara River Valley, the unglaciated high plains of Agate Fossil Beds National Monument preserves bones of animals which roamed the land supposedly during the Miocene era, or 20 million years ago. Sediments deposited by streams flowing down from the Rockies, as well as volcanic ash blown from eastern Nevada and western Utah, contributed to the preservation of these rare fossils. This area is also called Ash Falls Fossil Beds, Having been presented with these awesome geologic formations of Nebraska, we hope you can now recognize the inaccuracy of the stereotype held by almost everyone. Nebraska has many more natural features that most people are not even aware of.